in the previous class we have uh, discussed something about gas welding uh, in gas welding we have discussed oxy acetylene welding and we have also clearly seen three different type of flames that are produced uh, during the oxy acetylene uh, welding and that two uh, flames are generated or produced because of the ratio of oxygen and acetylene that you are trying to mix the gas chamber mixing chamber right if at all oxygen is more then it is oxidizing flame if acetylene is more compared to oxygen then it is reducing flame and if the ratio of oxygen and acetylene are same then it is neutral flame and uh, we have also seen uh, which flame is used for what which material and also why right so if you have any doubt please try to see the previous class recording and if, if still you have any doubts please do whatsapp me then we'll discuss in the group uh, and then we can proceed with that fine and also i've given a brief introduction about arc welding in arc welding i clearly mentioned that uh, uh, the uh, it can be thought of like uh, uh, machining but it's not a machining obviously so in non traditional manufacturing uh, lecture we have seen that the uh, like the examples are like electrochemical machining and the electric discharge machining we have seen them right in in both of them we have uh, i we have discussed we have been discussed that that the electrode or the tool and the workpiece have to be uh, electrically conductive here in this case uh, in this case also what i am saying is that instead of tool we are having electrode and that electrode can be consumable or not consumable that is what we have discussed right so if at all we are assuming that it is a consumable electrode right then uh, we have seen there are two different movements of uh, uh, electrode torch one is in the uh, forward movement another is uh, the uh, you know the movement so okay, we have seen, uh, this is what we have discussed the linear movement and the downward movement the linear movement uh, discusses about sorry one minute the linear movement discussed about this discusses about the movement uh, of weld in the sense like if you want to weld from one place to another place so then it, that is a linear movement right it is from left to right in this diagram and uh, the downward movement is because when the tool when the tool is or when the electrode is getting consumed what happens uh, the distance between the tool uh, electrode and the workpiece increases so so as, so as to sustain the electric arc we have to move the tool downwards or the electrode downwards right because of that the arc will be sustained and so and so we can maintain certain uh, temperature because of that electrode will be melted and also the workpiece also will be melted and then this deposition will happen right so there is a two moment and also we have i have told that the first moment and second moment are uh, what to say controlled manually then then this is this called a manual welding in this point and if the second in both the moments are controlled by a machine in the sense a computer then it is called automatic welding and then if the first one that is linear movement is being, uh, controlled by a machine or a computer and then at the second the downward movement is controlled by a sorry sorry the linear movement is controlled by a uh, controlled by a man or manually in the sense like the first one the first movement the linear movement is controlled by uh, manually and the second the downward movement of electrode because of the consumption of electrode is maintained by a machine and as this is two like one is machine and another is manual this is that is that is the reason why it's called semi automatic welding this is where we have stopped in the previous class now let's proceed with arc welding and now if you go and see if you have seen any time this arc welding might have seen in day to day life everywhere you might have seen so many times you might have seen but if you observe clearly i mean if you have observed there is some kind of box did you did you, did you see there is a big electric box machine box it's called like this you have some kind of a you know box like this and there are some two plugs two wires that are coming did you see that any time right anyone you have have you seen that right uh, anyone right this is called sorry welding machine right and you have some settings here some voltage and some duty factor settings will be there yes or no guys did you see yes or no 
Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, fine. So now this machine is used to control the voltage, current, all these things are this uh, all these things that you're trying to provide during the welding are controlled by this machine actually. In this machine, we can have two different type of machines. One is constant current type machine and another is constant voltage type machine. That is the second one. So let's discuss about constant current type. Why we have to give almost constant current type and why we have to give almost voltage, current constant voltage type and where we are using this. All these things will be discussed. Before that, what we have to know is that this is what is electrode here, this is electrode. And this is your workpiece. This is your workpiece. And this is your distance between workpiece and the electrode. And this is given as arc length. This is arc length. Right? Now, I already mentioned that this arc length is directly proportional to voltage. Or you can say voltage is directly proportional to arc length. It's not arc length proportional to voltage. Exactly, we can write like this. Voltage is directly proportional to arc length. In the sense, if if your length is more, then the voltage that you have to supply will should be the voltage the potential difference that you have to create should be will be more right and if your length is small if it is small the length is small then the voltage in the terminal will be small right so now uh, if you see constant uh, current type it is kind of a drooping say like drooping falling like this and if 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 you are uh, seeing the smaller current change there is a smaller current change it's almost equal to zero smallest means I1 is almost equal to I2, constant current. Uh, you can see a significant amount of change in the voltage. Right? So this you see the first point. For small change in arc voltage, sorry. Uh, small correspond to... Okay. Okay, okay, that's what, okay. For a small change in arc voltage, there is a very small, very small change in current. So the very small, there is for a small change of voltage, very small change of current is done. The sentence is right. Okay. And this is this is used for manual building. Why? Because uh, you you uh, uh, what do you say like uh, the uh, the the next sentence explains that. Let me read that. It's better. Okay. So the constant current curve shows that welding power source produces maximum output voltage with no load. And as load increases, the old output voltage decreases. As it can be observed in figure that major change in output voltage, or major change in arc voltage, there is an insignificant change in the current. In the sense, what 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 this guy, I mean, the sentence is not very clear. Let me explain the sentence. What is that? Okay. So already I told you that this length, this length, what we have here is arc length, and it is directly proportional. I mean, a voltage is directly proportional to arc length. If L is increasing, V will increase. If L is, L is decreasing, then V also will be decreasing. Fine. And I told you in the previous one, there is there are two movements: linear movement and the downward movement. Linear movement, forget about it. This is downward movement, and this downward movement is trying to maintain the gap between workpiece and the tool, workpiece and the electrode, right? The downward movement. So if you are doing this downward movement, obviously you have to do this downward movement to maintain the arc, right? If at all you are doing this downward movement manually, manually, then what happens? You can't you can't maintain a precise LA. You can't maintain this precise LA. Is it right? You can't maintain a proper uh, uh, distance between the workpiece and the electrode so that arc is sustained. It might be increasing sometimes. It might be decreasing sometimes. Constantly you can't feed it. Constantly you can't come down. Is it right? Because you are not a machine. Am I right? So. Because of that, there will be some kind of a fluctuations in the voltage. There will be fluctuations because this is fluctuating, LA is fluctuating, because of that, voltage also will be fluctuating. Right? So that fluctuations can be taken care of if you're trying to use the constant current type. If you're using constant voltage type, then these fluctuations are not allowed, right? Because you're making making it constant voltage, but it is not a constant constant voltage thing, right? It is hence that's the reason why we are making constant current. So for this constant current the voltage difference will be more and that difference can be accommodated because of change in length in distance because of change in distance between the electrode and the workpiece that is your arc length is it clear guys why we are using constant current type for manual welding yes or no guys if you're not understanding let me know i'll repeat it again 
Yes. Yes. Fine. So that is the reason why we have we are using this constant current voltage for manual build. Why manual? Because we, as as humans we are we are unable to maintain proper distance between that. As this L is varying, we also will be varying. We will we will be fluctuating, and that fluctuating can be put. It is maintained like this. Okay, that machine will take care of it. Okay. Now, now another is constant current type voltage, and a, this kind of uh, setting can be used for automatic building. Why? Because hardly you can see a voltage difference. Very 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 small change in voltage, a little bigger change in current is put. Current change can be easily taken care of because current is directly in supply that you are trying to provide. Right? Voltage difference here is nothing. Why? Because anyways you are trying to maintain a machine. So maintain is having some kind of a sensor and easily it will try to identify the distance between instantaneously it will try to identify the distance between the electrode and the workpiece and then it will it will move in the downward direction the downward feed is given right so this is almost constant la is almost constant so v is directly proportional to la so as la is constant v also will be constant hence constant voltage type is used for automatic building okay so that is why uh, this kind of uh, um, two settings are available in the building are you clear uh, are you are you okay with this two settings yes or no constant current type is a drooping one and constant uh, current voltage type uh, is a flat one and called a constant current type is a drooping one okay fine now 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 let's discuss uh, something on sorry something on uh, uh, the parameters like right? so what is the, there are three things one is uh, open circuit voltage another is short circuit current and another is duty cycle we'll be discussing these three, three things in uh, row what is that fine so obviously the where is this current coming from so we have some kind of transformer like this and this is your uh, primary coil secondary coil there is a step up step down whatever you, you know all this these are all, all uh, belonging to the electrical uh, department right electrical course right basic electron electricity I mean, you done this electrical engineering course right so there in, in what is this this type let's say this is what is this type is it a constant voltage or constant current type what do what do you say anyone guys hello We don't know anything. The line is drawn, but generally, if straight line is there, then it is constant voltage. Okay, straight line is given constant voltage. Please remember. If it is kind of a curvy, drooping, then it is constant current. Okay, fine. So if this is the graph, so it means that when whenever uh, uh, there is high, uh, when, whenever if you see uh, uh, the uh, circuit is open, in the sense current is not flowing. At this, at this point, I is equal to zero. Right at this point, I is equal to zero. Current is not flowing because the circuit is open, and at the at open circuit at open circuit there is some kind of a potential difference that you are trying to apply, right? And that is what is known as open circuit voltage. The, when the circuit is open, when the circuit is open, current is not passing. I is equal to zero, right? And at that point, what is the voltage? That is what is your open circuit voltage at I is equal to zero, right? And once cur current is closed, <coughs> when the circuit is closed, current is flowing. And that it's kind of uh, you know you know the potential difference right like uh, the kinetic energy and potential energy right? remember right so you can assume that uh, potential energy is uh, compared with voltage P is compared with voltage and kinetic energy is compared with the current Q in, in a sense if uh, this uh, ki the kinetic energy keeps on increasing as the potential energy is coming down right in the sense uh, the uh, voltage will be coming down as the current is increasing at some point. Uh, when voltage is equal to zero, maximum voltage voltage difference is zero, so maximum current is flowing here, and that is what is your short circuit current. Shorting, it's called shorting. You'll say no, uh, the uh, circuit board has been shorted because huge amount of current is flown to that, and the circuit has you know broken something like that. You'll say right, so that is called short circuit current. So if you see the diagram is clear. This is open circuit voltage when I is equal to zero, and this is short circuit current when voltage is equal to zero. Open circuit voltage 
short circuit current right fine and i told you in the previous slide that voltage is directly proportional to la right then if you want to remove this uh, proportionality constant and make it equal to zero then it will come like this that is what is va arc voltage why why it is called arc voltage because voltage across the terminal is, is maintained because of the distance between uh, electrode and the workpiece this is what is la right arc length right that's the reason why arc voltage arc voltage is equal to removing the proportionality constant you get some intercept a y intercept a plus slope into la is it right are you, are you okay with this equation because voltage is directly proportional to the length of the arc right so that's the reason why i have just removed the proportionality constant and i have even put a intercept also fine now and this t represents transformer the transformer i, I was talking about remember this one the box welding machine that is called a transformer actually right so now or or else this circuit is inside this that box okay fine now this is the equation that is coming up what is this equation that transformer transformer voltage divided by open circuit voltage plus transformer current divided by short circuit current is equal to 1 it's very important or sometimes this transformer is the current or voltage that you are trying to give that you are trying to give okay and open circuit voltage and constant uh, short circuit current is fixed for some system so if you are doing some kind of building it is fixed for some system okay and vt and it are the things that you are trying to provide okay you are trying to give uh, give to the uh, building operation okay sometimes even if you see this t will be dropped so simply simply people will write as v by constant uh, open circuit voltage i by constant uh, short circuit current is equal to zero like that they write sometimes so just i to make sure or to make uh, things understandable i wrote t as well here. sometimes if if you can if you see in some books it will be writing like, they will be writing like this also v by open circuit voltage ocv plus i by scc short circuit current is equal to one they even write like this also okay fine now this is very important equation you have to remember v by open circuit voltage plus i by short circuit current is equal to one good now and there is one more thing called duty cycle why because if at all you are you are not putting the current uh, for longer time during welding because during welding you can't continuously go sometimes you'll stop and again uh, uh, then some, suddenly when the power is reaching its maximum then again you'll stop and then again you'll continue why why you're doing sir why i'm doing this thing in pulses why i'm not doing it continuously because your plate is there you're you're putting so much amount of temperature onto that because you are welting and let's say the base temp the ambient temperature is 30 degrees centigrade and you're putting around 1500 degrees centigrade of temperature onto some kind of a bulk piece and obviously if you're doing welding you have to have some time for that heat to dissipate if you're not having that time to uh, heat to dissipate then the overheating of uh, these things will happen and that's not good right so to un make sure that that heat whatever is uh, put inside or generated during this process should be dissipated should be dissipated for the dissipation of uh, heat you will make that sometime idle it means your turn off your arc you turn off turn off your arc for some time that is called arc off time or idle time right so hence duty cycle is nothing but percentage of on percentage of time of arc is on divided by total time so arc on time plus arc on time plus idle time this idle time is for dissipation of heat okay fine this is what is your duty cycle fine now now okay fine sir how do i uh, uh, make uh, what 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 is the uh, uh, you know the settings that i have to take how do i make the settings right okay already you know that v is equal to a plus bf this is because you already know arc voltage is directly proportional to arc length and then we have converted that to this fine and we also know that this equation is this like v by ocv is equal to v by ocv is equal to i by scc and what is this this is your constant current type and this is used for manual welding 
and this is used for automatic welding. This is the constant voltage type is for or automatic welding, constant current is for manual welding. Fine. Now, and you know that this is your intercept A and the slope is B here, right? So you have uh, the length, the equation of your voltage. And this is your voltage was current uh, graph for your constant current type. And these two will meet at some point and that point is given as stable R. The R will be stable at this point. Right, the arc will be stable at this point, and at this point, what is happening as it is current constant current, constant current, right? Constant current that is the reason why this uh, uh, the tra uh, the uh, arc means the the uh, the uh, uh, arc current that is coming from here and the voltage that is coming from here, the arc from the current from here are equal, right? So, this is for arc. And this is for your transformer actually. So this this is for your transformer because we are already have seen that the weld, welding machine are of two types, right? This is your transformer settings, right? Right? And this is your arc setting. So if your transformer setting and arc setting are meeting at some point, then it is stable arc. Okay. So at that point, your arc, uh, uh, you know, oh, current is equal to transformer current. Right? So you have to provide this current. You have to provide this current so that the, any changes in voltage can be taken care of by the machine. Either you can't fix both of them, right? Because the power is constant. The power that you're trying to give to the welding is constant, right? V and I are the variables. Either you fix this or you fix this. You can't fix both of them and make power equal. Already constant power is given. This is given. And you're fixing this so that V is variable in this case, the first case. In the second case, you are fixing the voltage and you are uh, allowing the current to change according to its vision will. Right? Here also, this is for arc and this is your transformers. And if you see, the stable arc uh, comes at this velocity, uh, the voltage of transformer is equal to the. Yeah, this kind of questions will be asked. Why, why, will, why will they ask? They might ask this kind of questions when uh, the, at, during the constant current type setting. Uh, they will ask four questions. One is uh, the uh, arc current is equal to transformer current. Arc current is not equal to transformer current. Arc voltage is equal to uh, transformer voltage. Arc voltage is not equal to transformer voltage. So pick one of them. They will say. They might ask this question. For a stable arc, for a constant current type thing, they will be, they'll be asking this or they will give you the setting and they'll may, they may be asking some kind of question like this. So they might ask. We don't know. Is it clear? So, and all these things are, and all uh, some gate problems, we are not going to discuss them. We'll, we'll solve problems. I, I, I made uh, the questions for uh, metal forming and the welding. Uh, I mean, we, I have a big, big, very, uh, you know, in each one, I have some approximately 70 questions. So, we can't solve 140 questions today, but we'll solve some specific questions, selected questions, and then we'll cut it out. Let, but let me complete the uh, uh, welding part in half an hour. In the next uh, 45 minutes or so, we'll be solving some uh, important questions in forming and welding. Okay. Now, so there is there is this problem called arc blow during this arc building. So let's understand what is arc blow and then see what are the remedies for that. To so avoid uh, arc blow, what are we going to do? Okay. Now, what is arc blow? We'll see that. What is arc blow? If you see this diagram here, this is your electrode. This is your electrode. And this is your building block, and you are moving from left to right. Let's say, and if you are moving from left to right, okay, let left to right, your your this thing will be like this, right? Your your uh, short will this this is your electrode, this is your electrode, and this is your workpiece, right? And some arc is generated, arc is generated, and you are moving from left to right. Good, fine. Everything is clear now. As electricity is generated, there are some kind of a magnetic lines that are generated because you should know this because of electricity, some kind of magnetic lines are generated like this. Right. Right. Now, if what is the problem here? What is the problem here? The problem is nothing but the workpiece is towards this side. So workpiece is more, so there is no workpiece here. As the magnetic lines are very much towards the left hand side. Initially, when uh, when initially when the welding is started, as the magnetic lines are this side, it, there is a chance that the arc is 
trying try to deviate and deviate towards the magnetic lines the arc will try to deviate towards the magnetic lines and it can happen at the end of at the end also the magnetic lines are more towards this side so the arc will deviate towards the workpiece right when if it is if it is at the center if it is at the center then both are same both both side workpiece is there both side magnetic lines are created the arc will be exactly at the center so because of magnetic lines the deviation of arc will happen when the welding is performed at the edges at the ends at this is here one end and this is here another end and because of that because of that uh, okay this kind of uh, deflection of arc is known as arc blow this kind of a deflection because of magnetic lines is known as arc blow and because of that what will happen it results in severe spatter and improper bead geometry severe spatter in the sense if you see uh, this is your weld bead let's say this is your weld bead and now you see some kind of pitted surface like this some kind of a surface some extra tuck 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 spots are put on that that is called spatter so for if you at all this kind of things are happening then spatter will happen that is severe spatter more amount of spatter happen and also your geometry what was the bead geometry bead geometry you might have known you have seen what is this what is this anyone what is this what is this one first one what is this what is this two so what is one this is your bead geometry what is one anyone we have, we have discussed this yesterday in the bead geometry what is one the protrusion onto the weld bead yes reinforcement what is two excellent excellent i mean what is two penetration amazing and amazing so we have seen the percentage dilution is area of uh, penetration divided by area of reinforcement plus area of penetration we have seen that clearly in the previous class very good very good so that bead geometry is not coming out to be good if at all this arc flow is there so what are the remedies remedies are nothing but if your work piece is like this what you do that you take some other piece and just put it here this is not your welding part take another piece put it here and don't join them it's like almost near so when you're doing welding here excuse me if you're doing welding here obviously there is some material so the magnetic lines will be concentrated here here so the arc blow will not happen so those are called this is tab in tab in and tab out so you provide and if you are doing here also the magnetic lines here here so arc will not blow so arc blow will not happen right or else you reduce the current because the current is the reason why the magnetic lines are magnetic lines are formed so reduce the current intensity of current and then perform the operation or else you don't use higher flame higher arc lengths use smaller arc lengths or sometimes you can provide some coating onto the electrode so that this arc blow is avoided so these are the remedies for arc flow so this might be also a question in the examination first they will be asking they will be giving some sentence they will say what is this or maybe they will say what is arc flow and they will be giving some options you should be able to pick the right one or maybe what is the uh, what are the uh, following options which one which one of the following option is a remedy or a not a remedy for arc flow right this can be the questions fine and now i told you already the duty cycle is given as arc on time by total welding time total welding time is nothing but arc on time plus idle time right plus idle time right and uh, uh, the important formula that you have to remember in this case i'm not going to derive this the important formula that you are going to this, this is the formula i square d is equal to constant the derivation is here but let's not this go into deeper but i'll tell you the basics what is the basic during welding heat is generated that is i square rt this is called joule heating this is called joule heating because you are providing some current there is some resistance and your time of arc is this arc on time and this is heat generation and obviously you need to have some heat dissipation as well the dissipation is because of the convection that is uh, convective heat transfer coefficient into area of cross section into delta t that is temperature difference right so if you see this case if your dissipation is more than generation then it is good happy but if your dissipation is less than heat generation that's not good right heat is accumulated it is accumulated how much is heat how much heat is accumulated generated heat minus the dissipated heat and this is your accumulation right fine 
now um, you have to remember uh, this formula that is i square d is equal to constant i square d is equal to constant what is i i is nothing but current and d is your duty factor okay so you sometimes what they say is that uh, uh, you can use this formula like uh, this is your rated rated in the sense like the machine provided values on the machine they say a rated current i can give maximum of current this much duty cycle i can give this much duty cycle or the setting that you have put here and desired what is desired the desired is nothing but what you wanted to have in the location what is the current that you want to have during the location what is the duty cycle uh, that you want to uh, have during the welding life I mean, the real welding that you are trying to perform right so this is the condition so this can be a direct question which one of the following relation is true in the case of arc welding i square d is equal to constant i into d is equal to constant i by d is equal to constant d by i is equal to they can ask anything but i square d is the answer right answer i square d is equal to constant is the right answer. very important formula very important okay now so i told you that electrode can be a consumable one and a non consumable one first we have to know what are the electrode functions right the electrode functions are nothing but it acts as closing the electrical circuit right if you have you have this thing you have this thing and you have positive terminal and negative terminal like this you have put like this very good but if it has to close the circuit the touching then only it will close the circuit right and another thing is if at all in sometimes this electrode will provide material will fill the material will fill let's say if you're trying to uh, join this butt welding so you have to fill the material inside you have, have to fill it right so filling that this electrode has to consume right so these are the two functionalities of your electrode if only first one is satisfied then it is non consumable if uh, these two are satisfied then it is called consumable in the sense in non consumable electrode is not welding in consumable electrode is melting that is what you have to understand basically right so fine sir i don't want uh, this electrode to be non consumable so what kind of material i have to use for non consumable electrode because you are creating so much amount of temperature there huge amount of temperature is created and you have to maintain you have to keep such a material which is having high melting point and high electrical conductivity high melting point in the sense it should not melt as easy it should not melt, melt that easily and also whatever the heat is generated it should be able to conduct as soon as possible so the examples for that kind of materials are graphite tungsten and carbon so generally we'll be using tungsten for our purposes okay and and also you are not coating anything on that let's say this is tungsten electrode let's say and you're not you're not coating anything extra on that there is no coating on that we'll be using the bare electrode but for the case of consumable electrode what you do is that you take some kind of mild steel uh, rod and then you coat it why we are coating that we'll see that we'll see that why we are coating we'll see okay so in consumable electrodes we have bare electrode that's what, what uh, i told you and a coated electrode why we are co coating the electrode because it acts as deoxidizing agent during the welding why because uh, it produces it produces it produces shielding gases to protect from the possible condensation so when you are doing the welding when you are doing the welding what happens arc is generated and coating is already there and with the uh, bare electrode this is bare, bare electrode and this is coating this is coating and this is bare electrode right bare in the sense like the pure electrode without coating and as the coating also is melted some kind of fumes are generated and that fumes will be acting as a protection layer so that the ambient oxygen is not attacking the weld pool because of if you the ambient oxygen is attacking the weld pool then oxidation will be happening that's not good it is contaminating the weld pool who is contaminating oxygen is contaminating the weld pool and if you don't want that to happen you are coating it uh, some kind of fumes are generated and also if you are doing the coating it stabilizes the arc that's what right what the unstable arc is because of what arc flow is right we have seen that and the remedy was also the same thing if you see the remedy provide some flux or maybe provide some coating onto that we have seen that right so these are the uh, things that you have, to, you have to know about the electrode and uh, forget about forget about this electrode designation but anyways i shall tell you uh, like we have seen some specification in grinding wheel isn't it like we started with some specification and final specification these are meant for your manufacturing and then type of abrasive particles 
uh, the structure, right? We have seen all these things in the grinding wheel. Like that, here also electrode is having some specification. Electrode is having some specification, right? So this is E, that is type of manufacturing, the extrusion, whatever it is there. And this one is giving the type of coating that you're trying to provide out to that. The coating can be high cellulose, titanium, it can be anything. And the second one is the position of electrode. How you're doing horizontal welding, vertical welding, overhead welding. We have seen this. These are the positions of weldings we have seen. And this this uh, uh, on a space or this uh, cap is gone, gone for the polarity. If you're using uh, direct uh, polarity, then you have to give zero. If you're using reverse polarity, then you have to give one. So please tell me direct in direct polarity, uh, 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 electrode and workpiece electrode and workpiece so should electrode be positive or negative in the direct current electrode should be positive or negative in the direct polarity what do you say yes electrode should be negative workpiece should be positive for reverse current electrode should be positive workpiece should be negative good excellent fine and then this uh, this 322 is nothing but the strength, the tensile strength of electrode, yield strength of electrode, percentage of election, of, all these things are mechanical properties. And the last one is given for the specific uh, specific information that uh, the company can put onto the last one. So let's not, uh, if you want, you can remember, but I, I think uh, this kind of questions are asked in engineering service examination, but I don't know whether they'll be asking in HL or not. Get, uh, I didn't see any time asking this kind of question. Fine. Now, we, yeah, these are very important. Now we have to know. Fine. So, what is this? This is a butt joint. Fine. Good. Now, I want to fill this gap. I want to fill this gap. So, how many electrodes are required? Electrodes are like pencils. How many electrodes are required? How many electrodes are required? The electrodes are not, uh, how many electrodes are required? That is nothing but total volume of weld bead. The total volume, the red color one is the total volume of the weld bead. Right, divided by the volume of each electrode, volume of each electrode that will give you total number of electrodes required for the welding. And how many passes you have to do? How many passes you have to do? Number of electrodes required, number of electrodes required divided by the number of electrodes per each pass. For each pass, how many electrodes are consumed? Is nothing but nothing but. Let's say if you if you are traveling from uh, one from here to here here to here this is one pass for this one pass how many electrodes are required how many electrodes are required that is what is in the denominator here okay like that num total number of electrodes can be calculated from here and then you can put this and then you can find how many passes are required how many passes you have to do fine welding time per pass is nothing but length of the weld bead length of the weld bead divided by the weld velocity divided by the weld velocity how length divided by velocity. Velocity is by L by T. So L, L cancels, T will go up, so time will come. So that is what is building time for each pass. Cool. Okay. Now, welding time, total welding time. This is welding time per pass. This is total welding time. Total welding time is nothing but, total welding time is nothing but arc on time, sorry, arc on time by duty cycle. What is duty cycle? Duty cycle is nothing but arc on time by total time, right? The total time will go off. That is the reason why welding time is like fine. Simple, simple formula. And what is arc on time? How do you calculate arc on time? Welding time per pass into number of passes. Welding time per pass we have already calculated in the previous slide, right? Length of the weld bead by weld velocity. So length of the weld bead by weld velocity. Length of the weld bead. By weld velocity and number of passes also we have calculated number uh, total uh, uh, what do you say total number of uh, pass no 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 how do you calculate number of passes and total number of electrodes total number of electrodes divided by the uh, electrode required per pass electrode required per pass there we can find out then r count time will come r count time can be substituted here divided into 2t seconds then we'll get total welding time Okay, fine. 
time. You have to remember all this formula. And if you are revisiting this video, pause this video, try to uh, write this all formulas in your short notes and try to memorize them as, uh, as many times as possible till the examination. Okay. And in, in the interviews, nobody will ask you the formula. They'll be trying to ask you conceptual questions. This formula can all are useful only for the examination. Fine. Now, let's proceed. So till now, what we have discussed is nothing but the basics of uh, arc welding. In arc welding, we have different, different type of buildings. First one, what we are going to discuss is tungsten arc welding. What is tungsten arc, uh, in, uh, sorry, tungsten inert gas welding, not arc welding. Tungsten inert gas welding, but it's an arc welding. There is another name for tungsten inert gas, that is nothing but gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW. Either it is known as TIG welding or GTAW welding. So why it's tungsten, why it is inert gas, we'll see. So I told you already, the properties of electrode should be, it should have high melting point, high melting point, and it should have high thermal conductivity, high thermal conductivity K. And these two are useful for non-consumable electrode, isn't it? Non-consumable electrode. In the sense that the electrode will not be consumed during the welding. Right? And also I told you the materials for these are graphite, tungsten, all these things we have seen. So we have selected tungsten. In the sense, please remember tungsten inert gas welding is a non-consumable electrode welding. Because it can't it get it cannot get consumed because of its high melting point and high thermal conductivity. Fine. And okay. Now we will see the process and then I'll tell you why it is tick, why it is inert gas. I'll tell you why we are writing as a tick. So let me tell you the procedure first. So what is the procedure here? It's nothing but we have some kind of a setup here. Okay, let me zoom this and tell you. So if you see, this is what is your tension electrode in the between. If you see, can you see my hand here? Yes or no? Can you see my hand? The movement of hand. Yes. So this is your electrode here. This is your electrode, right? And now, now this is your tungsten electrode. In the sense, it is not consumed or it's not melted, and the conductivity is very high. Good. Now, conductivity is high. It is trying to transfer heat. Okay, fine. Then who who will take the transfer heat? Okay, I'll say I have block A, block B. Block A is transferring heat as soon as possible, but somebody should be there to take that, right? So what I'll do is that I will provide some water. This is called water inlet. If you see here, this is water inlet here. This is your water inlet. And this water inlet is will go inside and it will collect the heat from the tungsten electrode. Temperature that is generated here will be absorbed very easily by the tungsten electrode. And that is transferred to water, inlet and outlet, outlet is there, it will go, water will be uh, heated and come down. So cooling is happening. Okay. And another thing is that another, uh, with the help of this one pipe, one pipe is sending water, another pipe is there. This another pipe is sending some inert gas. Why inert gas? Because I told you that the atmospheric oxygen will try to contaminate this welt pool, this welt pool, right? So the atmospheric oxygen will try to contaminate this weld pool. So to avoid that contamination, you are trying to provide this shielding gas, that is your inert gas. Right? You are trying to provide that inert gas. Now, that is the reason why you are, you are providing uh, the two things here. One is water for cooling, another is for shielding, that is your inert gas. Okay? And uh, rest of things are same. And also, I told you as the electrode is not consumable, let's say if you want to fill, you are, you are trying to make a butt joint, you want to fill the material. So you have to provide extra filler material. Electrode is not consumable, but if you want to fill it, some extra material that you have to fill. Right? Like in gas welding also, if, if at all you want to fill, you have only flame. The flame is not giving any material, it's giving only heat. Here also it is provide, providing heat in the form of arc. That's it. So now we are providing extra material here. Okay. So this is how uh, the uh, tungsten inert gas uh, welding is performed. Okay. That now that's the reason why it is tungsten because of electrode. Electro is tungsten. Inert gas is for shielding the weld pool from the uh, contamination of weld. 
and it's also known as gas junction gas junction arc building what is this gas inert gas tungsten is a electrode arc is generated welding is being performed clear or not yes or no very good very good now so all these things what i have told uh, and and also inert gas is argon so most commonly used inert gas in this case is argon the, the, the two points have been clearly mentioned. The one pipe is for uh, you know uh, cooling the uh, electrode, and another pipe is for uh, sending the inert gas. Fine. Next. Fine. Now, now where we are using this uh, tungsten inert gas, we are using this tungsten inert gas mostly be, in the cases of aluminium and magnesium. Why this specific case, sir? Why we are using this TIG welding for aluminium and magnesium? Yes. One thing is because of this phenomenon. It's called cathodic cleaning. Okay. I already mentioned uh, somewhere in the previous class that aluminium is highly prone for oxidation, isn't it? Isn't it? It, it is very, it can easily get oxidized very fast. Right. So, if you are having aluminium as your object here, then, then this is getting oxidized easily because even though you are providing shielding as there is a possibility that it will get oxidized, right? Now, and and and, and sometimes what will happen? Uh, 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 this this layer will not allow. This layer, whatever the oxidation layer, will not allow heat to uh, send in, or maybe arc. Uh, it will take more time to get produce the heat. So to to do that, what you do that in this in this kind of uh, tungsten inert gas, you provide this kind of polarity. What is this polarity? Anyone who can say what is this polarity? Is it a straight polarity or reverse polarity? That polarity that I have given here. By seeing the figure, can you say what kind of a pro polarity I have pro provided in this case? Anyone? Workpiece is negative. Electrode is positive. What kind of polarity is this? Anyone, guys? Come on. What is this polarity? No one. Come on. Is it not liver reverse polarity? Yes. Yes. Rishikesh, you are right. It is reverse polarity. It's reverse polarity. You are right. So now what happened? Now let me go, go back to the diagram. What happened? I told you already from reverse polarity, electro electrons will travel from negative polarity to positive polarity. So when this oxidized layer is formed, these electrons will hit this oxidized layer and then it will peel the layer off. It will peel the layer so that the fresh weld pool is in the action. Or the fresh weld pool will be ex exposed to the arc. Right? So it's called cathodic cleaning. Cathode is being cleaned because this is anode here and workpiece is cathode, isn't it? So the cathode is being cleaned because of that, this is known as cathodic cleaning. So, so in terms of when you want to uh, uh, weld aluminium or magnesium, then you can use tungsten inert gas welding with reverse polarity. Please remember this. Is it okay? Is it okay, guys? Hello? Yeah, good. Good. Now, so here uh, the, the thing is very costly. Why? Because you are having two pipes here, shielding arrangement. You see, it's very, uh, it's not very simple. Either it is complicated, but it is, it's not very, you know, simple. It's a little, little bit uh, extra arrangements are required here. Because of that, the cost is very high for doing this kind of building. And um, as because of non conventional building, only five on thickness plates can be joined. Uh, because you are, you are not uh, send, pro, providing any extra clear material with the help of electrode, right? So it's not consumable. So the thickness of build that you can do will be uh, limited to 5 mm of thickness. 
and uh, additional filler material is used that is one of the limitation additionally you have to introduce uh, 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 filler products ready so that you can fill the material right and and one more thing even though the melting point is very high for tungsten but it's not ideal right it's not ideal so obviously there is a huge temperature that is generated because of that temperature what happens some kind of uh, tungsten particles are uh, uh, melted uh, or removed from the tungsten electrode and then uh, getting mixed into the workpiece. They will fit and try and deposit in the workpiece. And that increases the brittleness of weld pool. If you are mixing, the tungsten is getting mixed into the weld pool that uh, increases the brittleness. And that's not good because brittle, brittle is very bad because uh, if somewhere, somewhere around some uh, crack is, uh, has uh, initiated, then the propagation will be very easy in the case of brittle. Uh, structures okay so these are the limitations of gas tension arc building now let's proceed with the another one that is nothing but uh, gas metal arc building okay. in gas metal arc building it's also known as metal inert gas building or gas metal arc building so what is metal here what is inert gas here all the things we'll discuss. Okay, it's a very simple setup. I'll just uh, zoom it and show you. Okay, so it's nothing but the electrode is consumable. Consum the electrode is wire now. Electrode is a big wire, and this wire is wound onto a spool. And there is a spool here, and that wire is passed through to rubber bat rollers. Why it is passed? Because if there are any impurities onto the surface of the wire or electrode, those will be getting squeezed. The air particles, some some you know some kind of impurity, some air uh, that is there will be removed by squeezing the electrode in between two rubber pads. Right, and then it is the fresh one is coming and it is entering into this uh, uh, zone where you have. A column, you know, there is a column on both sides. If you see, that is your shielding as column, and shielding as provided here, and then it is trying to come into this thing, and then arc is generated, and uh, the shielding as is providing a protective gas umbrella here. Okay, the shielding as uh, is providing, uh, uh, giving some kind of um, protecting shielding as uh, umbrella, and that is protecting from the atmospheric. Uh, uh, Oxygen and nitrogen, whatever it is, so be, because these two will be creating uh, in, uh, problem in the case of weld pool. And this is continuously coming. Why it is continuously coming? Because it is getting melted. Right? Continuously, it has to be fed. And that is the reason why it is called gas tension arc building. That's it. Everything is written here. You can read them. And this is a consumable uh, arc building. And as the electrode is wound to spool, the maximum size of electrode is 3 to 4 mm because it is a spool. You can't give take a bigger electrode and you can't you can't wound not a spool. You have to have a very smaller, you have some limitation on the diameter of the electrode or the wire. Because of that, uh, the um, uh, the welding speeds are low. The welding speeds are low. Because you have to give more and more, uh, you have to send more and more wire. For sending more and more wire, uh, it has to consume as we are sending it, but it has to consume, right? So for that, you have to give more heat. So for a given heat, limited limited uh, velocity or limited speed is provided. Limited speed is provided like this. For the limited speed, you can't go in this direction very fast. That's the reason why this is what your linear moment, right? The first moment, linear moment. So hence, the welding speed is very low in this case. In the case of wind building, fine. Next, next is nothing but submerged arc welding. The submerged arc welding is little different from the MIG welding. What is that? In the MIG welding, we have seen that the protective shielding as is coming and it is protecting like this. In the case of submerged arc welding, what is happening? The arc is submerged. In this case, we are seeing the arc. In this case, we are seeing the arc. In this case also we are seeing the arc we can see the arc but in this case we we want we can't be seeing the arc because what will happen you take the 
plates that you want to join. You take the plates that you want to join. Sorry, and you put some flux material. This is your flux material. Okay, and then you enter the wire inside it, inside it, and then start the welding. When the welding is start, then arc is generated. Arc is generating heat is produced along with the weld plates. The flux that you have, the flux powder that you have provided onto that also will be heated and melted, and <coughs> that produces some shielding gas. Yes, to avoid this option to enter into this weld pool. Okay, and why it is called submerged arc? Because it is inside this flux. The arc which is generated is inside the flux, right? That powdered flux is there. So the arc is trapped inside this or submerged inside this powdered flux. That's the reason why this is known as submerged arc welding. Okay. And have you ever seen this uh, arc welding? People will do with the help of some goggles. They say that never look into that welding with naked eyes. Why? Anyone who can say the reason? They say that if you are if you are seeing arc welding with your uh, naked eyes, uh, your eyes will get damaged. And that's the reason why you, you use goggles. Anyone? Why we are using that kind of goggle setup, guys? Hello. Is it yes or no that they, we have to use goggles? Yeah, eye production. I know why. Why? Why? From where? From eye is getting protected from whom? Smoke and all will be generated everywhere during gas gas welding. Also, smoke will be generated. But in, during gas welding, you never use goggles. Smoke is generated every time. Okay, ultraviolet light. From where ultraviolet? How how come ultraviolet light is generated? Okay. So I'll tell you. So it is your electrode. Yeah, it is produced by electric arc only. I'll tell you why. So if this is your workpiece here, right? And let's say this is negative and this is positive. Fine. So electrons, electrons will come down and anions will go up. Right? So they as anions are going up and electrons are coming down. There might be a chance that this not chance there will be a, there will be this thing that the, your positive or negative are hitting together, right? Your positive or negative are hitting together. When they are hitting together, there is some kind of a temperature generated, and that temperature is that uh, temperature is generating some light. That light is in the range of ultraviolet range. Is in ultraviolet range UV UV range. Whatever the light that is generated during this and this is what is called spark actually this is called your spark sparks are generated small puddings are generated small like uh, diwali crackers that pudding small small uh, you know that lightnings will be falling on your uh, shoe and here and there right so that things that light is generated in the ultraviolet zone and that is known as ultraviolet radiation that ultraviolet light is not good for your eyes so that's the reason why you use some protective goggles to avoid your eyes from the ultraviolet radiation. Okay. And here, in the case of uh, submerged arc building, no need to use any goggles. Why? Or you, can, you should use it, but arc is already submerged inside this flux. So there is no point of ultraviolet radiation. Even though some ultraviolet radiation is there, it is suppressed. This process. Okay. Fine. And also, please remember. Uh, the weld that are done by the submerged arc welding are very stronger than uh, the other, uh, stronger than the base plate. Whatever the weld that weld weld deposition you have done here, right? So this is stronger than the base plate. Stronger than the base plate. That is what is the important. That are the important points of your submerged arc welding. Okay. Now, fine. Now let's discuss about uh, electro slag welding. Electro slag welding is nothing but you have uh, you are doing it in this direction. What is this? Is it a horizontal, vertical? What kind of welding is this? 
what kind of a welding is this is it an horizontal welding vertical welding overhead welding vertical obviously you are you are going against the gravity you are you are putting it and you are going above like this above like this okay so if you are if you are cutting a cross section here it should be like this actually it should be like this but you are cutting a cross section like this so what is happening here you have some you have some copper pull shoe here it's a shoe which will provide which will support the weld whatever this is your weld pool this is your weld pool here weld pool right so this weld pool is there this weld pool is there so that that weld pool should not be spilling here and there so you are providing some water pool shoe and as your welding is going the shoe also will be moving up direction the shoe also will be moving in up directions and this setup also will be moving in up directions it's like mig welding only these are some rollers some wires coming and it is hitting arc is generated and you are trying to weld like this in this way and now here the important thing is nothing but the arc is not continuously generated sometimes you stop the arc and whatever the heat that is there in the weld welding pool that is used to melt the electrode itself once the sufficient amount of heat is not there then only ignite arc is ignited so that is what is here electro slag welding this and all are like basic uh, you know uh, miscellaneous casting techniques we have discussed like like that these are miscellaneous welding techniques okay next is uh, plasma arc same thing plasma arc machining also is there in the same way plasma arc welding somehow you are generating some plasma in the in the temperature in the uh, temperature zone of 1700 degree centigrade 17000 degree centigrade and how plasma is created and all we are not discussing it is created somehow let's assume by some means it is generated and then that heat whatever is generated because of plasma arc is used for welding that's it okay next next is resistance welding what is resistance resistance is generated because of electrical circuit right let's say if uh, um, you have this uh, electrode and then you have work piece and the gap between is air this air is not non conductor of electricity hence if you draw the circuit then it will be something resistance and then circuit current is flowed into the electrode here and this air is elect uh, resistance and then this is work piece so this resistance is the place where the electricity is obstructed for the flow the the current is not being flowed right so during that resistance that resistance because of uh, circuit if current is being trying to flowed for some time t because of that heat is generated heat is generated right and that heat is given by i square rt i told you already that is known as joule heat is known as joule heat okay and now what is h h is heat generated i is current in ampere r is resistance resistance in ohms t is the time of current in seconds time of the current flow in seconds okay and please remember in resistance welding we are not using any filler material we are heating with the help of joule heating no filler material i'll tell you why we are not using filler material we'll tell you okay if you are not using filler material what is the this kind of building what is uh, what is the category of building if you are not using filler material anyone i told you if you are using if you are not using filler material there is one building it's known as one building some building if you are using filler material uh, no filler material some building filler material some other building i told you what was that building anyone if you are not using filler material what was that building In the, in the first yes yes now we need is autogenous welding you are right it is autogenous welding okay so the, some of the important resistant welding are spot welding precision welding and seam welding we will be discussing these things okay fine so we will be discussing about spot welding so uh, you see the setup but anyways like this transformer you know secondary coils you know all these things are there somehow you are putting you are uh, providing you are trying to allow the current to pass let's assume that okay now so your work pieces are like this work pieces are like this and you have some electrode this is your electrode and this is your base electrode both this and this this is electrode and this also is electrode 
and you have closed it you have some circuit here okay and you close the circuit and you, have, you want to allow the current 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 is trying to allow fast like this but what are what happens if you look into this zone if you zoom it it will be like this there is there are some surface irregularities at micro level that surface irregularities is filled in with some air and that air is not allow, allowing the current to flow and it is acting as resistance right some resistance is there for the current flow because of that some heat is generated at this point in between the in between the interface between the plates and because of that heat some amount of material on top plate some amount of material on the bottom plate is melted because of that heat generated because of the resistance right so because of that melting happening on top and bottom some kind of uh, spot is formed or oh, some melting is formed and then you apply some pressure apply some pressure from the top and bottom and when before uh, before applying pressure what you do you stop producing you stop giving the current because already because of uh, passage of current because of resistance some melting is happening between the two uh, work pieces to be joined in the in between the interface you stop the current flow and apply some pressure and wait for some time and then the spot is formed and joint is formed are you getting my point did you understand the mechanism how spot is being formed there yes or no guys yes fine so like that you have a big sheet one spot two spot three spot like that you can keep on making spots and then you can join the materials and that sometimes that spot is also known as nugget the spot is known as nugget generally that nugget will be in the form of a sphere sometimes the nugget will be in the form of sphere or sometimes in the form of a cylinder sometimes cylinder as well okay fine sorry so you can calculate the diameter of nugget like this you can calculate the diameter of height of the nugget like this let's not discuss these are the formulas you can and but you have to know the mechanism of spot okay okay let's proceed the next one is the extension of the previous one but it's called as projection welding so what is projection welding okay so you want to join this and this you want to join these two one and two so what you do you provide some projection onto this like this some projections some projections okay and then you place it like this this before and you try to pass some current some current and here at this edges this will have resistance right at this edges this will have resistance because of resistance this whatever the localized projections that you made will be softened because of melting softened because of melting and then after some time you stop the current flow and then apply some pressure apply some pressure then this will be forming like this kind of projections spots and hence welding is performed and that's the reason why it's called projection because you are creating some kind of projections before welding and trying to pass that uh, electricity through that uh, setup because of the uh you know dual heating occurring at these two projections that is softening and then this kind of building is formed that's why it's called projection building is it clear guys yes or no hello yes now another thing is nothing but continuous spot building seam building it is continuous spot building because instead of having electrodes like this 
electrodes like this, we are having wheel as electrode, having a wheel as electrode, continuous wheel. Continuous color electricity is supplied continuously uh, heat is generated at this interface. As heat is generated, you keep on moving. It is continuously stitching. Continuous stitching is happening in between. Continuous spots are formed. And as it is continuous, the electrons, uh, there is a chance that electrodes are getting heated. So you are providing some coolant onto the wheels of electrodes so that the electrodes are not damaged. Okay. So that is what is your steam building, continuous spot welding, you can say. Stitching, continuous stitching. You see, this is what is happening. You see, continuous stitching is happening. Like you can see here also, continuous stitching. Continuously, it is being formed like this. It will keep on forming. Stitch welding also it is known as, it's also known as stitch welding. Okay. And next is flash butt welding. Oh, this is another very good welding you have to know. What is that? It's nothing but you have this, uh, 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 what do you say, uh, two um, uh, objects. Let's say if you have some kind of cross section like this. Okay, let me very that. Okay, if you have some kind of like this and another is like this. You want to join these two. Now you do, you bring them together, right? And you pass electricity like this. When you're passing at this junction, resistance is there, right? Resistance is there. As resistance is generated here, because of that, the tips will be melted. The tips will be melted. And you stop the current flow and then apply some pressure like this. Apply some force or pressure like this. Force like this. And wait for some time. This flash is formed and then they are getting solidified and the two, two uh, uh, you know, work pieces are joined together. Okay. That is what is flash butt welding. Again, this is also a resistance welding. Coming, It will come under resistance welding. Okay. Next. So these are the formulas for uh, electric arc welding. I told you already. Power is V into I. This is voltage and current. And heat input to the workpiece is nothing but some efficiency into heat that you're trying to input. Right. And this is what heat required for melting. How much is heat required for melting that workpiece? Right. So this is input. This is required. Required. This is input. So if input is equal to required, it's okay. If input is not equal to required, then only the efficiency will come into picture. So heat of melting required divided by the heat input is your melting efficiency. Because how much amount of input that you are giving is used for melting. Because you are giving some, uh, uh, what you say, uh, some 30, 30 watts of input. And your, at the end, 28 watts is used for heating. Two watts is lost because of some reasons, right? It's not ideal, right? Whatever you're inputting, it is exactly using there. So that's the reason why here if you say this is 28 and this is 30. So this is what is here, 28 by 30, you have calculate something, then you'll get the efficiency. Okay, fine. Now, these are some problems. What happened? Okay. The next is thermite welding. Wow. This is nothing but uh, generally if you if you uh, hear no need of any electricity, no need of any gas, no mixture, nothing. It's a chemical welding. It's a chemical welding. But what you do is that you have some crucible here, some crucible. Crucible in the sense where your uh, you know metal castings are done. Or it's it's also known as some kind of crucibles are also known as. Uh, what do you say the furnaces? You can say them as furnaces. One minute. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now, so now you you put some uh, material. If you see here, this is your red color one is your material. And the top one is your slag. On top one, you're putting some uh, uh, chemicals. 
right and if you are mixing aluminium and iron oxide then it is creating this aluminium oxide plus iron plus some heat this heat is generated at this point because of that the below part is melted this is melted and that melted one is getting dropped into this you are pouring it it's kind of a casting only it's not a welding you are, you are calling it welding because you are pouring you are joining two materials but it's kind of a casting as well because you are pouring it you are pouring the liquid metal directly okay so these kind of things are used for joining the railway uh, you know uh, tracks you see the rail tracks there if you just type thermite welding space rail tracks in youtube you'll get so many videos okay. so this is what your railway track is railway tracks you no know, maybe like i section beams you see the railway tracks are like this and it will be like railway tracks and you want to join uh, some railway tracks some gap is there that gap should be filled with some liquid metal and that liquid metal is provided by this kind of chemical reaction that is being done so why is there why are using chemical reaction i'll heat it somewhere and i'll bring it and pour it here no no we are will be using this thermite welding in hilly and forest areas where there is no uh, proper electricity available there right you can't you can't have some factory some crucible and then you know big furnace there bring it and pour you have to do it so for that what you do you take all this aluminium and all these things you mix them good amount of heat is generated then you melt that material instantaneously and then that try to pour in between that then you will be getting welded or joined together is it okay guys is it is it clear yes now electron beam building so already i have told you electron beam building uh, electron beam machining i told you it is performed in vacuum right it is performed in vacuum so instead of using that heat for cutting or machining you are using that for welding is it okay same thing same things will be there in your electron beam machining as well same same points will be there but instead of using this uh, kind of setup in, uh, for machining you are using for you are using that heat for welding that's it okay laser also we have seen laser beam machining there also we are using uh, you are creating laser and then we are using that heat for cutting but here you are you are using it for welding that's it same thing both are same just for the sake of putting i put it ah this two are very important this two are very important what is that brazing and soldering this two will come under semi liquid solid state uh, plus liquid state welding and also these are heterogeneous buildings because the filling the liquid metal filling the filler material is not equal to the parent material filler material is not equal to parent material that's the reason why they are coming under heterogeneous building if you have seen the classification in the previous slide you will understand that we have already discussed so autogenous building homogeneous building and then heterogeneous building autogenous no filler material homogeneous filler material is used but filler material and the parent material are same heterogeneous building filler material is used but filler material and the parent material not same so what we going to do so brazing and soldering are same same but only difference is brazing is done above 450 degree centigrade and also what you do okay let me tell you the procedure the procedure for brazing and soldering are same but there are some small changes that makes these two uh, different uh, these two methods having different names so what are those you are having some material you want to join these two let's say circuit boards you want to join them now you maintain certain gap between the circuit boards this gap is very important so what you do before uh, putting this them uh, these two work pieces for one and two maintaining some gap what you do you clean the surfaces you clean the surfaces here so that there are no impurities once you clean the surfaces how do you clean the surfaces you clean the surfaces by using this flux so what you do you apply some flux in between and that flux will go in between and then they'll dissolve the impurities that are there in between the plates okay so you apply the flux and the flux that you are going to use in brazing is borax borax is the material that you are using as a flux why what is the use of flux flux will dissolve the impurities which are there on the surfaces of base metals 
or surfaces of work pieces that you want to join together. Now what you do, you take the filler material. The filler material here is zinc or brass or copper. Mix of this as well. Now what you do, you heat them, you heat them, and then you just you just bring it here and just place it here. With the help of capillary action, this will suck. This, this will be getting sucked inside. With the help, if you are putting the drop here, with the help of capillary action, that will be getting sucked inside. And wait for some time. Apply a little pressure. Wait for some time. And then they'll be getting solidified and well joint is performed. Right. The same thing will be happening in soldering. But please do maintain this clearance is very important. This clearance that is where this clearance is more or too much of less is not good. If it is more, the capillary action will not come into picture. If it is less, that good amount of thickness is not generated so that the weld joint will be weak. So proper clearance is provided so that good amount of capillary action is generated so that it will be getting sucked inside. It. So that's very important point. Fine. So one important point here is above 450 degrees centigrade. Second, borax has flux. Third, filler materials are zinc, brass, and copper. Okay. Same thing we have to do in the case of soldering, but you are doing it below 450 degrees centigrade. Filler material is lead and tin for soft uh, soldering, and for hard soldering, you are using it lead, tin, and silver in the ratio of 30, 30, 40. That's it. Everything is same. So there you have used borax. Here you are using some solvents, some acid pickling, some kind of mechanical cleaning. You are rubbing it with some kind of emery, uh, you know, that paper, emery paper. Yes. That's it. You will rub now. Before that, you just rub it so that it will create some kind of roughness and clear that you know, impurities and then adjust that clearance and then try to put the solder. It will suck it. If you have done the soldering, you will know this very easily. You can relate it. That's it. And this is what is the representation of weld. Sometimes question can be asked in this kind of uh, field also. So, so if you uh, have drawings, if you have drawings like this, you have, you have engineering drawings, right? So engineering drawings it will be like this. It will be something like this, and they'll they'll take here and they'll 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 show like this. So something like this. It means that you have to do welding here. They are saying that a man do the welding here. So you have to know now in an engineering drawing sheet you have to know where welding has to be performed. And now welding can be performed there itself, or sometimes don't do welding here. Take this to the site, then perform welding there. So you have to do that on site. So all these things can be should be represented in one diagram, one representation. So this is the representation. This is the uh, representation like this. Okay. So what is that? Let's see. So here they will be mentioning some value. Here they will say there are how many spots you have to do. What is the effective throat? If, if you are doing some kind of this welding, then what is this is your throat, right? Throat. Then what is the uh, you know length length of the welding speed, or length of the pass? All these things are all the specifications are put on that. And this round means you have to weld all around. All around in the sense like if you are putting some kind of plate like this, you have to weld around, all around, okay, if you are having that kind of circuit. And if you have this kind of flag, means don't do there, take the parts individually to the site and assemble there, commission there, assemble there. And this is the reference to the joint number, obviously it is pointing out to the place where the welding has to be done, that's it. Is it okay guys? So that's the end of uh, uh, welding. So let's uh, uh, discuss some problems. Let's discuss some problems. Before that, let me stop sharing and open that one. Open that, I have to open. One minute.
we have these questions. Okay. Let me share the screen. Can you see the screen, guys? Okay, one minute. Huh? Let me. Okay. Now tell me the answer. The first one. Are you seeing the screen, guys? Hello? Ah, tell me the answer on the first one. Obviously, answer is A for the first one, right? Answer is A. Next one. Uh, not next one. I'll tell you specific answers. Okay. What about Okay, fifth one. What is the answer for fifth one? Fifth one. What is the answer to fifth one? Five. Fifth one. No. Anyone with answer A here? Answer is A actually. I told you in the previous class, if you remember, so let me take some. Uh, in the previous class, I told you, if you remember. What was that? It's nothing but the if you're having uh, a metal cutting, so it's, it's, these are grains. If you're, these are grains, if you remember. So after metal cutting, how it looked like? It looked like this, right? It looked like this. And something have cut off here. But in metal forming, what will happen? It will be like this. Right? The grains are not cut off. Is it? Yes. That's the reason why the answer is A. Answer is directional effect. Yes. In cold working operation carried on. Okay. Tell me this. Uh, Ninth one, ninth one, ninth one. Ninth one. Ninth 
what is the angle of shear i told you it's nothing but this is your angle of shear theta okay or sometimes it can it, it can be given as this i also but i am giving it as theta okay so you are saying that if at all uh, uh, increasing increasing the uh, uh, shear the force will be increasing that is what you are saying if your shear angle of shear is increasing the force is increasing that is what you are saying how because i told you clearly okay i'll tell you two options there is no shear and there is shear in case 1 and in case 2 who will have more uh, uh, force who should have apply more force first one you have to apply more force or second one you have to apply. so then you are you are you are uh, contradicting your uh, your initial statement in the sense i am telling as my shear is increasing my force is reducing is it right here in this case in the sense my shear is zero right here shear is zero then you are saying force is more here there is some shear some value of shear is there and then force is reduced here it means that if you are increasing the shear force is reducing am i right obviously answer is b it's not a it's b yes yes ah uh, what about next one anyone who can answer this next one next one please try the next one what they are saying what they are saying the required blank the required diameter of blank of blank for deep drawing of a cup of diameter d and height h so they are saying that okay let me erase this okay what they are saying is that if uh i want a cup i want a cup of diameter small d and height h if they are saying this okay so obviously there will be some thickness as well please do not forget this is your thickness t they didn't mention that but what they are saying is that what will be my blank diameter what will be my blank diameter capital d so that i can convert this to this anyone in the in the deep drawing deep drawing anyone with the option so it's nothing but volume consistency right because volume before should be volume after right volume before should be volume after so what is the volume obviously this blank will be having some thickness as well right so blank will be having some thickness of diameter capital d and some thickness t right so what is volume before it's nothing but what is that anyone anyone who can say this it's 5 by 4 t square is the area of cross section into thickness will give you volume you are saying answer is c it's d square plus 4 dh okay let's see let's see and when volume after after this thing is this what is volume after this it's nothing but this small cross sectional area first we'll do this this thing this cross sectional area what is that pi by 4 small d square into t right plus plus circumference circumference what is that pi d h into t pi d h pi d into h into t will give you the total this thing so t t t gets cancelled right so uh um, so this is a pi 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 gets cancelled here four four will get but here four will come so d square is equal to d square plus 4dh so under root d square plus 4dh answer is d not c right it's d right 
Am I right? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Answer is D. Answer is D. Okay. Next. Uh, tell me 11th one. 11th one. Eleventh one. Actually, answer is D here yeah, because obviously this because because of uh, improper holding, wrinkle will form. Wall wrinkling also is there. Tearing also is there because you are not providing proper improper in the sense. Very high will lead to these things. All of the above is the answer. Okay. All of the above is answer. Next one. Next is uh, 13th one. What is the answer for 13th one? What is the answer for 13th one? 13th. Yes. Obvious the answer is T. I have told you the formula. I told you the formula. If you remember, right? The bend allowance B A is equal to theta into R. This is what is your bend. That this thing plus K T plus K T. Right? Answer is C. You have seen that. Good. Next. Okay, tell me the answer for uh, important questions. Sorry, it is all are there, but there is no time for discussing. I'll send you all these questions. You want, you can practice them. I'll send you all the things with the uh, key. Okay, what twenty six one answer? Answer for twenty six one. Anyone? Answer for 26-1. Collapsible tubes. For pastes. Paste. Paste tubes. Paste, I told you. Paste tubes are produced by whom? I told you clearly now that uh, the paste tubes are produced. Is it not impact? If you remember, I told you, no? Collapsible tubes that toothpaste initially. Yes, it's impact extrusion. In fact, it's B. Answer is B. Answer is B. 26 one. Yeah. Yeah. What about, what about this, one? this one? Can you tell me? Can you remember the formula? Here in uh, our formula was uh, H1 minus H2. Here in the, instead of H1, they have written T, TI. And instead of H2, they have written T F. And uh, uh, instead of uh, R, they have written diameter. Tell me the answer for this. They are asking theta. Angle of bite theta. They are asking angle of bite theta. Theta. Anyone who can remember that? Patronity nine one. Is it not? Remember this formula? Yes or no? So this is T i minus T f, right? Divided by d by two. So I can write two into T i minus T f by d. 
this is the answer 2 into t i minus t m by d 2 into t i minus t m by d is c c this one c is the answer is it right c is the answer right yes so here uh, 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 um, Okay, tell me the answer of 31, 31. Roll separating force is nothing but the force with which the rolling is occurring, that's it. That's called roll separating force. They're saying that roll separate portions, roll separating forces will be reduced if you are increasing the roll diameter, if you are reducing the roll diameter, if you are increasing the coefficient of friction, if you are deploying the back rolls. So they are saying that you want to reduce, you want to reduce the roll separating force. What do you, what do, you do? Will you increase the radius of the rolls or will you reduce the diameter of rolls? The answer is, there are two answers I can see. No, you can't increase. If you are increasing, uh, the uh, radius of rolls, then the uh, bending of rolls will, uh, what you say, the bending of rolls will be very prominent. You don't, I don't want that to happen. So you can reduce the diameter of rolls and also you can apply, you can up deploy this back of rolls. So reduce the diameter of rolls and de deploy this back of rolls, then, then roll separating force will be reduced. Answer will be B and D, according to me, but I don't know. In this case, you can opt for B and D. Anything is right after. Okay. Next. Yeah, this one, 38th one. 38th one. one. If you remember the formula, if you remember the formula. How how it is bulk modulus? Shearing shearing uh, uh, is occurring, right? Punching and blanking is the option. Punching and blanking is occurring because of shear force, isn't it? So who is important? If shear force is there, shear strength is important, isn't it? We have even discussed pi into tau pi dt. You remember that? Yes, answer is B. Answer is B, not bl uh, bulk modulus. Answer is you are not using bulk modulus. You are very early using bulk modulus. You are using bulk modulus if you are if you are doing some compressing. Compressing here you are cutting it. You are shearing it. Shearing in the sense shear force is very important. This kind of question will be yeah. Then now you can practice just important questions, some questions which you can answer very easily and I'm showing here. Okay, let me show some welding questions as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, tell me the second one. No, no, tell me the third one. Tell me the third one. In GTAW, a constant and stable arc gap is maintained at a constant current level. It is due to fact that, tell me. Just read the question and tell me logically, why, 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 why might be the reason why, uh, reason because we are keeping the constant arc gap, logically. Anyone? Answer is D. Why? Obviously, answer is D because tungsten electrons are not conservative. You are right. Constant current source is used. You are right. And argon is used in swelling gas. You are right. Right? All of the above. Okay. Next, next, next. Very little, little, little time is there. I'll just pick some important. Ah, 
What is the answer for 17th one? If you remember the formula, then you will be able to understand this. ZO is over circuit voltage, IS is short circuit current, and uh, they are asking V. 17th one. Anyone? Do you remember? Do you remember the formula? Do you remember the formula? What is that? V by V naught plus I by IS is equal to 1. Isn't it? We are asking V. V by V naught equal to 1 minus I by IS. And V is equal to V naught into 1 minus I by where is that? Where is that in the option? Is it not V naught into 1 by is, is it not C? Is it not C? Yes, C is the answer. So this kind of question will be asked. Uh, and uh, tell me this. Second one, I'm clicking randomly. 20 second one, what is the answer? If you are having highly electrically conductive material, which of the process is not used? If you have highly electrically conductive material, which of the process is not used? Anyone? So arc welding we can use because material. So gas welding also can be used. It doesn't matter. But we can't use resistant welding because if they are highly conductive material, there is no chance of resistance. No? If there is no chance of resistance, there is no heat. There is no heat, we can't melt it. No melting, no joining. Right? Answer is C. Isn't it right or wrong? Because gas welding and resistance uh, laser welding are independent of electrical conductivities of material because it, it don't matter because laser is generating heat gas welding is generating heat because of chemical reaction laser is generating heat because of its uh, light settings right because of population inversion and all it doesn't depend upon the conductivity of material workplace material arc welding it is it is dependent but it is good that you have highly electrical conductive material but in resistance welding if your conductivity is uh, high in the sense you are having least resistance. In the sense if you have least resistance, then there is no point of melting happening because of there is no uh, resistance, there is no heating. There is no heating, no joining. So that's the reason why uh, welding uh, highly electrical conductive materials cannot be used. Uh, and resistance welding cannot be used for highly electrical conductive materials. Is it okay? Yes. Like that, everything is a logical thing. Just I'm picking some random questions. Uh, Okay, tell me this 31st one. Select the wrong statement for breathing. Select the wrong statement. Wrong statement. Please read the question carefully. Select the wrong statement for breathing. You are saying that uh, pillar material or basic material buried material below the melting point of the metal to be joined. Is it wrong? Your filler material will be having a temperature which is below the melting point of metal to be joined. Is it wrong? It's a true, it's a true thing statement, no? Because if you have two materials, you want to join and you are having a filler material which is having a little bit lesser temperature than the Melting point of base metals. Put only, no? Otherwise, it will melt the base metal also. I don't want to melt the base metal. I want to join them. That's it, no? It is right only. 
deep, right? Okay, we'll see from statement by statement. The molten metal fills the closely uh, fitting space by capillary action. It's true. So, the, so option A is wrong because option A is true. Option B also is true. Smaller the gap in the joint, higher is the strength of the joint. It's good. There is no, obviously, there is the wrong answer. No, there should be optimum gap. There will be a optimum gap for the tensile strength. Smaller gap is good for uh, shear. Bigger gap is good for tension. But there is an optimum gap. You can't keep on increase because if you are having, if you are not having optimum gap, what will happen? Will the capillary action come into picture? Right or wrong? So if you want a proper capillary action to be performed, you have to have a, you have to have an optimum gap. Here they are saying there is no optimum gap. There is an optimum gap, right? So the answer is D. Clear? Yes. One more and we'll close it off. Yeah, 38th one. Tell me the answer for 38th one. 38th one. Uh, Subcharge welding uses. Anyone? Double star pending. Users, what? Submerged. Your electrode is submerged in flux. So, whether the, the electrode is bare electrode or coded electrode, core, core wire, tungsten electrodes, what do you say? What do you say about submerged electrode? And please remember that uh, 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 that uh, electrode is melting and they are getting consumed. So as it, they are consumed, tungsten will not be there. Tungsten is the wrong answer. You, you won't coat it because you are providing flux. You are providing flux, so you are not coating it. And it's not core wire, it is bare rods. These are bare rods. Bare rods are the answer. Right or wrong? Yes or no? Yes. So with this, I'll close the session for today because we have already extended 10 minutes. I think you have to take uh, dinner and then you have to sit for another class. And uh, uh, I'm sorry for uh, starting the class late. I'll be starting as, a, as early as possible with the tomorrow's lecture because tomorrow also we have from 6 to 8, right? So fine. So let's stop uh, here. If you have any doubts, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you. Good night.